Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm very excited to show you this game. I recently hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel, and when I started it, I had absolutely no idea that there would be this level of interest in watching hour-long videos doing deep analysis of a niche board game, but I feel very grateful to everybody who is interested in this and who has commented and has given me feedback. One of the things that I really love about this community is everybody's interest in getting better, and that's really one of the things I love about making these videos. So I look forward to your comments. Thanks again. Hope you enjoy this game. So this is a pickup game I played against uh, uh, Cirrus233, who reported being a watcher of this channel. So um, hope you enjoy watching this game. I was playing Free People. We rolled for sides and we said that Free People would get two action tokens. So I'm playing Free. They're playing shadow and you can see they allocated one eye rolled none but got a nice starting roll and i also got a nice starting roll i drew kindred of glorfindel and athalos and they got shadow lengthens and breaking the fellowship certainly shadow lengthens can be a very useful thing to get armies going but they got a great great flexible roll all right so let's jump in only one eye so i'm planning on just moving a bunch and uh maybe getting some armies in position we'll see what they do so they muster sauron Okay, fair enough. Then they muster Isengard, also good. And now I move the Fellowship and they miss and they draw a strategy card, which given that they don't have a card to play makes sense to me. Um, maybe, maybe you consider um, holding on to it in case you hit the Fellowship and you want to play Breaking the Fellowship. You know, if you get an eye or something like that on your, um, on your reveal, if you hit them. So, you know, I... It makes sense to draw also. I think that's a very reasonable play. Okay, I move again and they miss and then they get Saruman. Obviously good to get Saruman turn one for Shadow. I move a third time and miss again and they miss again, which to move three times, even against one eye without getting hit at all is only like a 25% chance. So this was definitely a very nice start for me to have rolled three characters and then to have not been hit at all. That's that's a great start for me. Uh, okay, so they move armies around. Yeah, so they just moved an army to go north. Sorry, I missed that for one second. And um, then I'm wondering what to do with my army muster. I don't, they haven't really given away much information, which I think is clever of them. Um, you know, I could muster with this, or I can move armies with this. That's the benefit of an army muster. And because there are two sides of my dice that have musters and only one side other than Will of the West that has army, I'm inclined, if I have army movements to do, and I'm debating, hmm, should I do army movement? Should I do mustering? If I'm sort of up in the air about it, I tend to favor the army movement when I have the chance because I'm more likely to roll musters next round. So I think I end up doing army movement, and I do, because it's always nice to get these units from Edoras to Westerminit so that if eventually an attack from Orthanc comes, you can get these units into Helm's Deep to help defend it. An old forest road can often be a useful defensive tool for Dew, which is um, Dale, Erebor, and Woodland Realm, these five points in the north. Okay, so my opponent moves armies from Gorgoth into minus Morgul, which makes sense. Look like Looks like maybe they're heading towards Gondor. All right, uh, they do have Denethor's Folly, so that makes sense. Okay, um, I draw Riders of Theoden, which that is the one one reason why you might want to delay this movement from Edoras into Westamnet, because then you can get more efficient army movement if you end up, because there are two mustering cards that only muster in Edoras, um, the, the Red Arrow and Riders of Theoden only muster in Edoras, though Riders of Theoden, if you have a companion in Rohan, then you can muster there. But um, the fact that I happen to draw this one, and, and Red Arrow isn't even playable yet because Gondor isn't active. So this is literally the only card that I could have drawn that that makes me regret doing this move from Edoras to Westamnet. But even so, it's a, it's a great card. It, it can get me more units into um, Rohan, and Daylight is a good effect if, if it looks like they're not really going for... Rohan at all. All right, New Powers Rising, great card for Shadow. So I think we're both drawing pretty good cards here. They allocate one eye, roll one more, 
and then I get no movement. So obviously that is not what I wanted to see. I wanted to see some movement and Will of the West and kill off Gandalf on turn two. That's what would have been good for me. Instead, I get three musters and, um, you know, think about what you would do there. I do have Riders of Theoden, which I could play. I do have Gandalf as guide. So, you know, I could be um, using the Palantir maybe to play Riders of Theoden, and then I draw into even more um, um, mustering cards, maybe. Um, you know, I, I saw that I just drew Grey, Grey Company. Had I had the chance to get Aragorn down to Minas Tirith or Dol Amroth to get him crowned, um, I would have been very open to doing that. I already had three movement. So with only two dice and a will of the West, I could get um, Aragorn down to Dol Amroth and crown him this turn. So I was certainly thinking about that also. All right. So um, I don't really have much to do. I, you know, this is a very inflexible role. So I'm just passing and seeing what Shadow's going to do. I muster Gondor one towards war because they moved from Minus Morgul into South Athelion. And I want to be able to usefully use these musters to get units. If they put Gondor at war, then I'll be happy to muster units into Gondor and buff up its its defenses. <clears throat> All right. So they're moving units from Morinon and Nurn into Gorgoroth. And I think... I can't remember if this way is slightly less efficient. I think maybe you end up saving a half movement if you um, meet up in Gorgoroth first and then split minus Morgul to Morinon and then move Morinon around to Daggerlad and North Athelion. I'm not sure, though. This may be just the same. Um, so that's fine. All right. I go ahead and use my Palantir with the Riders of Theoden to draw into more... Um, strategy cards, hoping that these musters are going to be useful and sort of delaying until the point where Shadow might be attacking uh, Gondor such that I can actually use these musters to get units, which is great. All right, Book of Mazarbal, not particularly useful right now, but it does make me think that I can maybe get Strider down to um, Dol Amroth maybe, or yeah, I mean, it looks like Minas Tirith is getting attacked, but something to think about. All right, so they move armies. They're getting, they're taking their time. No reason to put Gondor to war immediately. You know, one thing they could do is just wait a little bit longer and then get the Witch King this round. So they're going to be rolling nine dice to my four, which I never like as free people and always like as Shadow. So, um, yeah, so they can use their second to last die to attack us, Gilead, and then their last die to muster in the Witch King once Gondor is at war. The benefit to me is I'll be able to defend Dol Amroth probably, so that's a minor silver lining. Okay, I muster the Elves towards war because what else can I do? I, I mean, there's literally... I guess I could play Kindred of Glorfindel, but I don't really feel like um, Rivendell is a likely target. So I'd rather start to get the elves towards war and maybe be able to defend Lorien in advance. I don't know. Okay. And then they use this die to attack us, Gilead. That can make sense because now they're going to be able to put Minas Tirith under siege. Okay. So they don't play a card. I don't play a card. They get two hits, which is obviously really nice for them. I get one back. And then Gondor is now at war. So I clearly am going to muster into Minas Tirith because it's about to get besieged. And then Minas Tirith does get besieged. And now I muster the elves again. That's interesting. I could be mustering into Dol Amroth or Pilargir. But I guess my thinking is... If I muster now once with um, getting the elves one away from war, either my opponent will have to spend their last die to get the South Anduin Vale army merged up with the Moria army outside of Dimrald Dale, such that they can then attack Lorien at the start of next turn before I have a chance to muster them to war, or they're going to get the Witch King, and then next turn I can muster the elves towards war and then start getting and get a unit into Lorien before these armies um, come crashing in. So, um, and then, you know, this is unlikely, but it's possible that I can draw power to great, which is obviously a really nice thing too, because now I'm very efficiently defending Lorien and getting them to war. So, and even if I don't have power to great, it can still sort of um, tempt Shadow. All right, so let's see what they do. They get the Witch King. That makes sense. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. It's good to have an extra die. 
All right. So at this point, I'm like, okay, two musters, then I'll be able to get Lorien to war, and then um, that'll be fine. I also am looking forward to killing off Gandalf. That would be great. So let's see what happens. So I did not move last round, so my opponent does not have to allocate any eyes, and they allocate none, which I think makes tons of sense because, you know, the ring isn't going that fast. They want to get their military going, and I only have four dice, and I'm probably happy to not kill off Gandalf. He's, they're probably happy if I don't kill off Gandalf. So, um, all right, so they allocate none, and they roll none, and now I'm like, oh, all right, well, even if I don't get Gandalf, maybe I can just move a bunch. That'll be cool. Uh, and I get one movement and two more musters and a palantir. So these these rules were not cooperating with me. Um, and and honestly, yes, that was frustrating in the moment. But um, I love that about this game. Right. Th this is what to me. This is one of the core um, pleasures of War of the Ring. That you're trying to figure out how to use how to make the best of what you have. And look, I did get two musters. I set myself up to be able to defend Lorien if I want. So I sort of have to decide now, am I going for, um, am I going to defend Lorien and muster, or am I going to use these musters maybe to defend Dol Amroth? Because looking at the number of attacks they have, they have one, two, three, four, five, six attacks, and they can get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war with these two musters. So they can easily march this whole army into Dol Amroth, even without Corsairs. So um, while I would like to get the elves to war, I can use these musters more efficiently in Gondor. So, th so that's what I'm thinking here. It's not great, but that's probably what's going to happen. So, um, okay. So they muster, I pass, they muster the Southrons and Easterlings to war. Okay, Southrons and Easterlings are at war. And now that they're two actions away from being able to besiege Dol Amroth, I start mustering into Dol Amroth now. Because if they have Corsairs, they're two actions away. They move to Umbar and then they play Corsair. So I want to at least have my two elites into Dol Amroth before they arrive. All right, they play Denethor's Folly. I think that's fine. Um, I guess they're not really worried about... Um, anything. It's just a nice, nice play. And that's going to let them, you know, it's going to be really safe to be able to attack into Minas Tirith. This is a reasonably decent army in Minas Tirith. So getting rid of a leader and guaranteeing that stuff like uh, Deadly Strife can hit for full value. Yeah. Um, I think this is, this is a good situation to play it. I'm not super high on Denethor's Folly as a card, but this feels like a really nice situation to play it. The one thing I might consider is maybe I want to march this army from Minas Morgul towards Minas Tirith first. I, I don't know. Maybe this army in Minas Morgul can just stay there and never do anything, and it'll be enough to just use these Southrons and Easterlings to go to Dol Amroth, but I feel like they're, they have a good amount of army movement. I guess we'll see. All right, so I lose my leader. Let's see what happens. Uh, they attack into Minas Tirith. They play a strategy card. I can't play anything because Denethor is a fool. And Deadly Strife. So they get um, three hits. And I get two hits. So a slightly below average. You're expected to get, I think, around three and three quarters as Shadow. Uh, something like that. So I'm supposed to get, I think, three or something like that. It's a little below average for me also. Um so, okay, but they, do they press? Yeah, they press, they redraw, and then they get Onslaught. And now I have four units, you know, is it, was it that urgent to press? I don't know, maybe. You get to redraw an extra card, it seems like they have enough dice. I don't know. All right, they're going for it. So they play Onslaught. Fighting Urkai is interesting. To me, if they're playing this card, it means they're not as likely to go for, um, Rohan. And um, I think that makes a lot of sense, right? I actually managed to get these army units reasonably well. I mean, I'm not super close to being able to get into um, Helm's Deep. And actually, if you look at my dice, I would I, it would be a little tricky for me to get these units from Westamnet into Helm's Deep without using a ring because I didn't draw any more army movement. I would have to like retreat from Fords of Eisen into Westamnet and then use my only character die to move them into Helm's Deep. So um Helm's Deep is a little bit vulnerable at the moment. So th anyway, I didn't even mention this at the beginning of the turn, but that that was another play that they could have considered. Um, I like the idea of taking out Gondor first, if that's what you're going to do. Um, so, okay. Anyway, they 
they were in the middle of, I got sidetracked. We're in the middle of the battle of Minas Tirith. I have four regulars left. <clears throat> they have seven regulars and four leadership. They roll two sixes and then on the reroll get another six. So that is just a beautiful combat for them. They have onslaught on hand. I get two hits, but then they take uh, three and manage to get one more. All right. So well, they actually got three more, but um, a very effective onslaught. Nice battle of Minas Tirith. Very efficient. They're looking good. All right. Um, I continue to pass because they have so many more dice than me. And then they move armies. And because they move to West Herondor, it's clear they don't have Immerhill. I mean, they don't have um, Corsairs of Umbar, but they have enough actions to be able to get all the way to Dual Amroth. So I don't even have the luxury of mustering into Pilar gear because I need to put my elite into Dual Amroth. So um, I pass. They attack into Pilar gear. Uh, they don't get a hit which is pleasant. And now my unit is an Osgiliath. That can do a bunch of shenanigans. Uh, who knows exactly what it will end up doing, but you know, that's nice that there's a little possibility of shenanigans. Um, I go ahead and move the fellowship once. If I'm going to get a free movement, at least I get a free movement out of it. And um, then they move armies around. So this is one, like this is a situation where had they moved this army in North Athelion into position first, which would be in, in Osgiliath, then this wouldn't be possible. But, you know, whatever. That's that's fine. Uh, this one unit isn't doing that much. Even with Faramir, you know, it's probably okay. All right, I muster into Dol Amroth. I have to do that, and then they besiege um, Dol Amroth. So um, I use a ring here. I wonder what I'm going to use it for. I guess I'm moving again? Yeah. So I'm moving again just to keep the pressure up. They're getting good military progress, but at least I can get good fellowship progress. I don't like giving up a ring, but I really don't have that much productive to do with um, with my cards. Uh, maybe I could play Kindred of Glorfindel. Maybe I could play Power of Dom Tom Bombadil. Um, but I already have six cards in hand, redrawing more. Um yeah, I mean, if I play Kindred of Glorfindel, I end up drawing two strategy cards, um, and then and then discarding that, and then at the start of next turn, I'm going to have to discard even more. So, all right, they move Nazgul around. That makes sense, and um, I pass. So, I draw Aomer. I draw Dead Men of Dunharrow. These are fine. I would be I would be very happy to get to. Um, help out Gondor in some way. So Dead Men of Dunharrow is a nice way of sneaking back and causing some trouble in um, Pilar gear. And now I'm at five movement. So, you know, I could do like Grey Company shenanigans. There are a lot of things I might be able to do. All right. So what am I going to end up discarding? I have no idea. Um, do I need Book of Mazarbal and Power of Tom Bombadil? I mean, I could get the Dwarves to war just separate a companion get the dwarves dwarves to war all right um i get rid of power of tom bombadil and i think between power of tom bombadil and book of mazarbal i think book of mazarbal gives a little bit of flexibility and i'm not sure if i considered this at the time but the threat of um tom bombadil can sort of defend the shire so if i if i'm going to end up playing this as a combat card which i very well might in the battle of dol amroth um it might still it might be more useful to reveal Book of Mazarbal than it would be to reveal Power of Tom Bombadil. So that's very minor, but something to consider. All right, and then I get rid of an Ent because I don't even have Gandalf and it doesn't look like my opponent is attacking Rohan. So that's my thinking there. Am I in frame? I'm reasonably in frame. I'll try and sit right here. Right here. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Sorry if I've been out of frame for most of the video. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm thinking about declaring past Moria, but I decide no. They allocate one eye, and this time they roll two more, and I get my Will of the West. So I am hoping now to be able to kill off Gandalf. Um, there are some, some weird situations where I could get um, Strider. Like if I had, if I had, um, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Let's see what I do. Um, 
I would be worried about Day Without Dawn, so I have to use the Will of the West first because you don't want to lose two Wills of the West. So I just, I think I just go ahead and move. That's the most straightforward play. So I, I move and I get missed. And then um, my opponent uh, th- pretends they might have Day Without Dawn, but no. And then um, they attack into Dol Amroth. And I do play Book of Miserable here because I don't think I really need it and I don't see the dwarves getting to war right away. If I kill off Gandalf, then maybe Gandalf could come to Grey Havens and then play Book of Miserable. So that's something to consider. Um, and maybe I should have held on to it for that reason. Maybe it would have been better to play Kindred of Glorfindel. Um as the advantageous position here. Uh, I think I was thinking I wanted to bring Gandalf to Fangorn just to threaten Ents and to be able to keep him in range of, of defending um, these places. We'll see. All right, so my opponent gets two hits. I get one. They press, and they play Muma Kill here, and I play uh, advantageous position again, which stops them, which is nice. Um, but they roll two sixes anyway, and I only roll one hit. So they get three hits out of Muma Kill anyway, which is great for them. I'm down to two units. And then they press one more time. They play They Are Terrible, get two more hits. So the combats in um, Gondor went very well for them. I was not, even with my two musters in Dol Amroth, I was, um, and my extra muster in Minas Tirith, I just was not able to put up a significant defense of Gondor. So that is not not great for me. My my silver lining is that uh, I'm at six movement with the fellowship. So maybe that would be okay. Um, so my opponent plays Shadows on Misty Mountains, which is beautiful. It's really going to let them take Lorien. Um, and then they play New Powers Rising, also great. And now I need to really, even though I really want to defend Lorien, I'm also worried about defending Helm's Deep. So... Um, Okay, I end up playing Aomer um, and drawing into Power Too Great. So that is a great top deck. I play Aomer because I need to temporize. Um, I guess I'm just deciding to defend Helm's Deep. That's, that's sort of where things are. Um, I had thought about moving from Edoras to Westamnet with the army die, but... Um, this way I get to redraw a card with Gandalf. And then um, if my opponent attacks into Fords of Eisen, I can move from Westamnet into Helm's Deep. If I have time, I'll move from Edoras to Westamnet and Westamnet to Helm's Deep, but I don't know if I'm going to have time to do that. So we'll see. Um, and this is very unlikely, but I could draw into Power Too Great, which I did. So obviously that is quite huge. And my opponent has zero um, strategy cards right now. And they played some with Ar- with um, army dice, so there's a chance that I'm going to get to um, really stall them in Lorien for quite some time. So that that's a very good bit of luck for me to draw into power to great. I mean, I had more chances. I had been cycling strategy cards for a while, um, but just this was the moment that was sort of the last moment that it would be useful to get, and I managed to get it. You know, one quarter. I have drawn a quarter of the deck, so not crazy, but certainly certainly good. All right, so. Um, my opponent merges up in Dimmerald Dale, and though I would like to be able to um, get Gandalf this turn, I am more excited to defend Lorien because this guarantees that Lorien is safe because my opponent does not have any um, strategy cards. So it sort of gives up on getting Gandalf turn four. Um, I hate to be on four dice all the way into turn five, but... I also like defending my strongholds. And because Gondor went so well for Shadow, I feel compelled to um, really defend it. Uh, I I need to defend other strongholds because Gondor fell so quickly. All right. Um, So let's see. Um, My opponent musters more in Orthanc. And then this is interesting. So I use the... um, the army movement to get Helm's Deep ready because this attack out of Orthanc is just gigantic. Um, obviously, may- maybe I should have saved the end card just as a combat effect. That could have been reasonable. Um, the other thing I could have done with that, obviously, is muster into Lorien, anticipating that um, I m- might only get one muster next round or one muster before they before um, Shadow arrives. 
Um, maybe also La Sarnach, just to start causing trouble down there. So we'll see. Um, my opponent attacks into Fords right here. I play Confusion. They get um, no hits and um, one hit against me. Now, they didn't leave any behind in Orthanc. So I don't have Gandalf now. So they'll have some time, but I wonder, is it worth leaving some? I guess not. They're just, they're just going for it. So that makes sense. I only have four dice. I happen to draw another end here. So that's good. And um, if I manage to get Gandalf, then getting to play ends is obviously nice. Uh, my opponent draws half, or half orcs and goblin men. She loves lair. This is a army die, army card. So they will be able to get rid of power too great this round. Um, that was not, I think that was close to 50 50 on that. So they allocate an eye, roll three more, and then I get a nice amount of movement. So this is good for me. I get my one muster into Lorien. Maybe I should have had, maybe I should have mustered last time, but I'm also worried about what's going on here in Helm's Deep. Um, I do, I just, I don't have enough dice to defend Lorien and Helm's Deep. Um, and I, I feel like I really need to get my fifth. So, um, I move and I'm just trying to kill off Gandalf here. So they miss me and then um, they get rid of power too great. So obviously that is good for them to have redrawn a um, army card. And then I muster into Lorien. Hopefully that can put up some defense. Um, and then they attack into Lorien. And now I move again. And this time they hit me and um, they draw three. So obviously that is the best best possible tile. I really, I'm going to kill off Gandalf no matter what. And, um, a perfect tile. So the hunt has been going very well. Obviously their military has also been going well, but it's a nice, um, it's a nice balance. All right. So perfect tile for me. And, um, let's see, they don't have day without dawn, which is nice. They use this ring to move Nazgul around. Okay. Fair enough. If that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. Um, I don't know exactly how much of a rush that is. You could be attacking into Helm's Deep. I guess they're a little worried about putting Rohan all the way to war. Now that Gandalf is showing up, are you worried at all about Ents? I guess not. I guess we'll see. All right, so they attack into Lorien, and they play Dread and Despair. They get some hits. Um, They press. I get some hits back. And then um, I get one more hit. So the the combat in Lorien did not did not go their way. But then on the last round of combat, they get two more hits, um, and I get one hit. So they are at four units, and I'm at two, and um, that's how the Battle of Lorien went. Uh, Gandalf shows up turn five a little late, but okay. And then my opponent tries to take out Lorien with four units against two, and they don't have any cards to play. So I feel like this is, you know, what are your chances of rolling two sixes on eight dice? Like not great. I guess you're sort of, uh, whittling, whittling me down. Um, no card. I think about playing a card, but no. And then they get three sixes. So they managed to take out Lorien and obviously that's great for them. They're up to seven victory points. The fellowship is at eight movement. Okay. I'm up to five dice at least. Um, I draw path of the Wozes, which is potentially really good to be able to retake Minas Tirith or Pilar gear or something like that. And, um, let's see what I get rid of. I get rid of Elven cloaks. I mean, it's a zero, obviously it's nice to play the blue tiles, but I guess I'm thinking I'm going to have a Strider show up somewhere and play Grey Company. I, I don't know. Am I really saving Grey Company? I guess so. Um, I guess the Fellowship is doing so well. I, I guess that's my thinking. The Fellowship is doing so well. It, th those extra blue tiles are not like of high priority. Um, I can actually separate some companions and then have these combat cards be effective. Um, and, st and still the Fellowship will be fine. So I guess that's what's happening. My opponent allocates one. I rolls one more. I only get one will of the West, um, no other movement. So 
if I had a way of getting Strider down to um, Pilar Gear or Minas Tirith, I would definitely do that because I have um, Dead Men and then Grey, Grey Company and I have my Will of the West. So I could get Aragorn and I'm at eight movements. So I can basically put them anywhere I want. If I had rolled even a little bit more, or if I had had any character cards that would um, be able to uh, separate companions, then I could get them. All right, we'll see. Um, so I'm using a ring right now off the bat to separate. Wow, okay, that's impressive. So I used a ring to separate. <laughs> I forgot that I did this. That's impressive. All right. I used a ring to separate Strider into Helm's Deep. And I bring along all of the captains of the West. Oh, my God. So I can't believe I'm doing this. So I'm saying that I'm not getting into um, Mordor this round. Guaranteed I'm not getting into Mordor because I just used my ring. I only have one movement with the Will of the West. Um, and... Yeah, I just don't know what's what's happening there. Like, why don't they just attack Helm's Deep? You know, if I have this, could really look like um, help on un, help unlooked for, but the um, but the faction has to be at war to play help unlooked for. So if this army from Fords of Eisen attacks into Helm's Deep, then I can't actually immediately play help help unlooked for. The other thing is that I need this will. So yeah, so I think that my problem was I just rolled, I just didn't have useful actions to do with all of these Palantirs unless I separated out companions. Um, with companions on the map, I can play Dead Men of Dunhair. I can play the Grey Company. Um, there are a bunch of things I can do. Um, and I could have played Ents right here, but I think I was, I just, I didn't want to waste the extra card draw of um, the extra card play. So, I, yeah, this is very surprising to me. I don't see how this army can hold against Fords of Eisen, but all right, I guess we'll see. So that's what I do. Uh, pretty darn surprising, even to me. So I guess I'm thinking I have to hold Helm's Deep. And this is going to let me cause trouble in Pilar gear. All right. So, um, okay. Oh, oh, great. And I bring Mary too. So, wow. So I bring Mary. I leave the fellowship with a single hobbit. And this is, to be fair, this is something you can do when the hunt has gone very well, right? Military for shadow has gone very well. Hunt has gone very well for me. I need to trade some of my hunt goodness for some military defense. And that's what I'm doing. Obviously, it's sad to have to use a ring to do that here on turn six. Uh, but that's what has to happen. Okay. So I bring one more Hobbit so that this um, these one reveals um, don't actually reveal me. And the zeros are um, the only thing that could reveal me. I could threaten maybe having or bluff having um, there's another way and that way I could get into Mordor um, this round, but I'm not going to do that. I, I don't have it. And um, there's no way that, there's, there's no difference in shadows play. I don't think um, so. Okay. My opponent ends up attacking as Gilead from North Athelion. And I think the reasoning for that is that they're anticipating dead men of Dunharrow and that way, this army of nine can um, take out, um, can counterattack against Pilar Gear. So they don't get any hits. I get one and they press and I retreat to Druid and Forest. Okay, fair enough. Um, I play Ents now because I don't, I want to kill off Saruman and I don't want to give them more chance to um, muster there. You know, have decent chances of of taking doing two hits to them. They just muster an elite there, but I'd rather just get it guaranteed. So that's that. And then I play Gray Company on Rohan to be able to refill my hand and get another elite 
into Helm's Deep because I think the Gondor Force Pool, yeah, there's only one um, more elite in the Gondor Force Pool. So my plan, I guess, is to um, Dead Men of Don Harrow into Pilar Gear and then hopefully have, hopefully survive the counterattack from Osgiliath and then, um, and I have scouts. So, and then I can, um, I don't know what. I don't really know what my plan is. I mean, I guess I see this Will of the West. I'm like, maybe I can crown Aragorn. But it seems pretty hard to do that. Um, all right, so my opponent moves Nazgul around. And then um, they muster into Orthanc. They muster into Orthanc again. I guess they're just really scared of um, this army in Helm's Deep. I guess. Okay. Um and now I get a regular in Woodland Realm and a regular in Lasarnak just to cause trouble. Yeah, I guess my plan is to try and see what they do. All right, so they move armies into Fords of Eisen. They move armies to North Dunland. And then I draw a card here, I guess because I'm just, I'm really temporizing to get into Pilar gear and try and crown Aragorn this turn. I draw there and back again which is actually a very nice defensive card. So um, I discard scouts, maybe wrong, but I discard scouts. And then um, I guess my plan is to actually like hold Pilar gear against these eight units in Osgiliath. Um, I mean, with Brave Stand and some Sudden Strikes, I guess it's possible Daylight it's possible they don't have leadership. So I, I would be rolling five dice at five leadership. So I could inflict quite a few against them in Osgiliath. And then if they if they don't inflict much against me, which they wouldn't with Brave Stand or even with Daylight on a, on sixes with no leadership, um, they, they might have real trouble deciding to continue to press that. So, okay. Um, they attack into Helm's Deep and now's my time. I play Dead Men of Dunharrow. Uh, I leave... Who do I take with me? Uh, okay, so I ended up leaving Legolas, but I took four companions with four leadership into Pilar gear so that if they decide to counterattack from Osgiliath, which would cost them their ring, uh, they would... Um, it would be hard for them, and Brave Stand would be maximally efficient. So... Maybe, yeah, maybe I should have left another um, Captain of the West in Helm's Deep to try and survive against this. But this is a lot of hit points. This is 15 hit points against five hit points. So, um, all right, so they attack into Helm's Deep. And I'm personally, you know, very happy to not see Day Without Dawn, to not see attacking to Pilar Gear, and I'm just going to get to Crown Aragorn. And that's that's nice for me. I'm happy to have my six dice. I didn't get into... Um, Mordor this round, but I'm now going to be able to cause hopefully some shenanigans. Uh, we'll see. So they attack into um, into Helm's Deep. I play Faramir's Rangers here. Uh, they play Ulag High, and they end up taking out. Um, do they end up taking? Yeah. So they end up taking out um, Helm's Deep, and they're left with an elite and four regulars. So I have two elites and two regulars, and now Rohan is at war. So, um, you know, there's stuff that can happen with this army. And Orthanc is empty. So, all right, I get Aragorn for sure. So this is interesting. You know, maybe I should have just, like, moved um, once and then used a ring to move a second time, and then I would be in Mordor now. But... Because Shadow's military was going so well, I felt like I needed six dice to be able to continue to make some progress with the Fellowship, but then also just defend other places, right? I need to be able to defend Pelargir. I need to be able to defend Dale and Edoras or the Shire. Like, they, they only need two settlements. Um, so it's still going to be tough. I think maybe they could have been a little more aggressive against Helm's Deep earlier in the round. Um... I don't know. They did lose a die. So I'm rolling six and now they're rolling eight. So that's good. I did not move the fellowship. So they allocate no eyes and then they roll three. So obviously that's good for me. And then I get this beautiful roll, um, which gives me a lot of flexibility. 
So the first thing I start with is mustering and I use the will of the West because I don't want to leave up two wills of the West for a day without dawn. Um, and then they attack into West of net from the witch King. And that does not make a lot of sense to me because if they press, then I can just move into or So it's not that big of a deal, I guess, to give me, uh, two victory points, but I wouldn't like love it. And this is, yeah. So I, I think this, this feels a little strange to me. I, I think you just want to keep your victory points in Helm's Deep and try and find a way to get two victory points. Like these, these armies could maybe come up and do something and take Dale. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess it is a little tricky to find where you get the other victory points. I guess this army in Helm's Deep could take out the Western army or make some progress against them and then take Edoras. But I don't know. They also notice they did not roll any musters. They do have a ring, but they didn't roll any musters. So they have a lot of open strongholds, Dolgolder, Moria, Orthanc, and um, Umbar is not impossible. And I have had Andrew from very early on, maybe turn one. So, um, yeah. Okay, so they attack. I play advantageous position, which is obviously good when they're attacking into a settlement. And then they get two hits against me, and I get no hits back, which is unlikely. I mean, I, I should definitely be able to get some hits on five dice, on fives. Um, so that's not great. And then they press and then of course I retreat. So, you know, I think it makes sense to retreat to Fords of Eisen. They only move one in, which allows them to sort of get Edoras, but still hold Helm's Deep. So they're sort of trading Orthanc for Edoras. That could be good. I don't know if I'm going to muster. Yeah. Okay. So I muster into Edoras because, um, even if I take Orthanc, it's not, um, good if they get to if they get to 10 victory points while I get to four victory points they win so I still need to hold Edoras or something like making it at least a little harder because they can move South Rune, East Rune, Vale of Karn and Dale if I don't cause Edoras to be an attack so I think that's why I muster in there okay they're thinking and then I'm not sure that, yeah, so they're attacking into the Fords of Aizen. And I think, you know, I I don't understand that. I, th I think this, this probably is not right because you, you can, like, free people definitely can go walk into Dol Golder or walk into Moria or walk from Pelargir to Umbar. So, you know, that's tricky to use up that die to attack into Fords. If you get a bunch of sixes, then sure. Are they playing a card? They're playing a card. I don't play a card. They play back Black Breath. All right. I mean, you get to cycle it, but... Um, okay, so they don't get any hits, and this time I get two hits. So that's nice for me. And then obviously they don't, they don't press. Um, okay, and now I go ahead and move into Orthanc, because why not move into Orthanc? Get, that gets me two victory points. And now this one regular, who I think went from Pelargir to Osgiliath to Druid and Forest, <laughs> uh, survived some sixes in Pelargir. Didn't, you know, survive Pelargir, survived Osgiliath. This is this guy's a serious veteran or, or woman, but uh, probably a guy, given that it's Tolkien. Anyway, th this is a... Um, a seriously uh, hardened uh, military person. He's like, I'll go ahead and take Dol Golder by myself. That's awesome. All right, so I'm at two victory points. My opponent is at eight, so I have to be careful. I have to hold at least two of the cities. And and um, North uh, Dunland can also come over to the Shire. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. But because of the lack of Tom Bombadil, and I have this um, open Palantir, it's hard for them to know. So... So I think they end up, what do they end up going for? Um, 
they use their ring now to muster into Dol Guldur, um, which is weird because we... Ha- oh, right. I forgot about this. They use a ring to muster into Dol Guldur, which is too soon. You don't need to use the ring now anyway. And then they undo it like, ah, oh, no, I'm going to think about it more, even though they have orcs multiplying again in hand. So this is a 100% mind game with me just to like mess around. Um, and I say, if you have the Dol Guldur reinforcement card in hand, that was a sneaky undo. I, I'm like, who would... Who, I, I Wow. So I call it and then they laugh and then they say, I'm probably not that clever, which is just more bluffing. So, you know, um, and then I say... Honestly, if you did it on purpose and try and fake me out while realizing you had it in hand, I'd probably consider that a little too sneaky, not the best sportsmanship. If you didn't realize you had it in hand and saw it, then that would be different, I think. So I'm saying, like, if you intentionally used the undo feature as a mind game bluff, which is exactly what happened, I I think, to, for me at least, that crosses the line of, like, where I'd want to have mind games and bluffs and double bluffs. Um, but then they say which I think this is absolutely to their credit, they say, really, I'm not sure I agree. So they are saying, they're acknowledging, look, I, I don't agree with your, with, with sort of your assumptions about what appropriate etiquette is and what like valid bluffs are, um, which I think is this, this statement is really good sportsmanship because they're saying, look, that's on the table. I'm not, I'm not making any promises about that. That feels okay to me. I'm not saying I have it. I'm not saying I don't, but I'm just saying in terms of what I feel is fair etiquette, that's on the table. Um, and I say intentional undo fakery. And they're like, as long as the dice isn't cleared, why not? Which is, which is a totally valid position. And, and they say some mind games are fun. And then I say, okay, like I understand that perspective. So, so I feel like this was a really nice exchange. They could have continued the bluff even now, right? But they didn't. They sort of made sure, look, I, I don't want to be a bad sport. I, I just thought we were playing, you know, bluffing is fine, including anything undoing up until the point of clearing the die, which is absolutely the accepted um, rules for undo. So I, I think I was probably a little too cautious about um, mind game bluffs. And I think as long as both players are on the same page about mind game bluffs, it's totally fine. So now we know it's on the table. I had, I'd thought of it already as a possibility, but the, but the fact that they like really intentionally did it as a mind game bluff is actually kind of cool. And then they were a good sport about acknowledging that, that that was a valid play. All right. That was a long sidebar, but I think, um, I think more importantly than winning the game is making sure you don't hurt your opponent's feelings or feel like you're doing something, uh, you know, undo sneaky thing. So, so t- totally credit to them. Absolutely valid play. All right. They are now, instead of doing all of that mustering Dol Guldur and using their last ring, they're instead uh, moving armies, which makes sense. And they move to South Dunland and they move this army from Ash Mountains. I'm not sure exactly where this army is going. Um, I kind of expected it to maybe come try and take Dale, uh, but okay. So now I move my army um, and then calculating the number of dice that they have, um, it seems unlikely to me that they will be able to, um, right. So what am I thinking here? They could potentially get to 10 victory points by taking, um, Edris and by taking Pilar gear. But my thinking is they can't also defend Dol Golder and take both of those. So if they start by, um, defending Dol Golder, then I can go to Umbar and take Umbar. If they don't defend Dol Golder, instead go for the win I guess I'm just gambling on this elite in Edoras. I think I'm gambling on this elite in Edoras to survive um, the attack against this one regular. That's that's what my thinking is. I don't know. So like, let's say like this round, they just attack immediately into Edoras, or maybe they attack from us Gilead into Pilar gear. Then I have to move into Dol Golder. 
And then I guess I have some theoretical chance of attacking back into Pelargir if, if they take Edoras. But, okay. Anyway, um, they, of course, do have Orcs Multiplying again, because we know that. And um, we're like, okay, great. So I'm fine with that, because now I'm like, Strider and all these companions can go take Umbar. So I'll just go take Umbar. There's no way they can get to 10. Um, they attack, they play Black Captain commands using a ring, which I'm also fine with. And then they get to what happens? Oh, right. They, they move a bunch of, they move a bunch of Nazgul into Umbar, which is nice because, um, at least it makes me wonder what to play. I have Mighty Attack and I have Andril. And I have Sudden Strike. So I have a lot of good choices, but they can play um, uh, Foul Stench, which will cancel my leadership, which means I don't get to use Mighty Attack or Andril. Um, and they could have Words of Power, which would cancel um, one companion. Um, and that's why I shouldn't play Andril. I only need one hit. So Andril is actually in this situation. I have I've very rarely seen this, but even though I have Aragorn there, Andril is worse than Mighty Attack because if they have Words of Power and I play Andril, they can cancel Aragorn's leadership and then I won't be able to forfeit it. But if I play Mighty Attack, I have plenty of other companions to forfeit. So um, that's a, I, I very rarely see that, but that's, that's sort of a cool situation. Um, and they don't have any <laughs> useful cards. So um, they draw a card and they draw Words of Power. So um, I don't know what they have. I think I start with um, playing Sudden Strike. My thinking is I'm going to play Sudden Strike, and then if that doesn't work, I'm going to play Mighty Attack. And those are my two um, like combat cards. I don't know which to play which. If they have Words of Power and they have Foul Stench, then they can, and they play it in the right order, then they can cancel both Sudden Strike and Mighty Attack. But um, hopefully they don't. And, in, and I start with Sudden Strike, and of course, I can still just roll sixes naturally. I mean, I am going to get to roll a bunch of combat dice. I'm going to roll 10, 10 combat dice because even though I only have three units, I have a bunch of captains of the West. So, um, all right. I play Sudden Strike. Uh, they play Words of Power. Uh, so if I had played Mighty Attack, I would have just won, but guaranteed. But uh, I also have 15 dice to roll right here. So um, I have, oh, um, yeah, so Words of Power actually hurts Sudden Strike too um, because it reduces my leadership. So um, I only get three pre-combat dice, but I roll a six. So Umbar falls, and um, I managed to get to four victory points um, before, and, and they're at nine. So four for me, nine for them. Very close game. Um, the Fellowship obviously could have made it to um, Mordor this round if I had pushed them. But um, I needed to hold enough strongholds, uh, and it seemed like the military path was more successful um, based on the fact that they rolled no musters, three eyes, and um, and then I had I had more dice than them. I had six dice. So that was the game. Um, let's look at statistics. So... You can see that um, these are reversed. So um, I don't know why, but you can see they were a bit high on fives. I don't think that mattered too much to them. The, the combat dice were pretty even, nothing too crazy. Um, I think the action dice were pretty even. I was a little low on characters, um, but that was the game. So thank you to a thousand subscribers. And uh, let me know if you have any comments, and I look forward to more videos into the future. Have a great day.